Hello, and thank you again for joining me. I'm Tim Botuk, and this is The Joy of Painting Middle-Earth. Now, today we have a very special painting. <laughs> I know I always say that, but today's truly is a special painting, because this painting will be part of an art auction. That's right. It's going to raise money for a beautiful charity. Now, my good friend Sean Sullivan and his wife, they've been working in the land of Ukraine for 20 years, helping the children there, the orphans. That land has had a very tough time. There's been power struggles from people within the land, and then the other countries outside of that land have had power struggles that have played out right inside their borders. Mission 823 helps to protect and defend the orphans of Ukraine. So they are going to be having an art auction. I'll have a link down in the description so you can find more information on that. Now, let's get right to it. So today, I've prepared the canvas a little bit. I've put some liquid clear on there. It's a black canvas. Now, you can paint that with an acrylic gesso, a black gesso, or you can simply just buy a black canvas. They're the same price as the white ones, typically. Now, these black ones, they offer a lot of shadows, a lot of places for dark things to hide. As I said, today's painting is a painting that's supposed to inspire hope. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint a place that used to be very dark, very scary. And we're going to show how hope can come in afterwards. So I've got my liquid clear on there, just a very, very, very thin coat of it. We don't want our paints to run all the way down the canvas when we put them on there. So I've put that on. And before we start into our painting, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to lay down some color that you won't quite be able to see too much yet. You'll be able to see it a little bit. We're just going to go into our black, oh, excuse me, our blue. This is a ultramarine blue we're using and a sap green. And I'm going to pick up some of that sap green and just bring down here and mix in with that blue. So these colors, we're just going to put some of these right on the canvas itself. And maybe some of our burnt umber, that brown color, we're going to put that down. This will just give some color on the canvas that you won't really be able to see at first, but when you lay other colors on top, it'll really bring it out. So we're just going to rub this in here. It's not really showing that much, but we don't want it to yet. Okay, now if you're going to paint for family and friends, you can do that before they even get there. And then your canvas will be all ready to go. And when you start to put in the other colors, they'll just bring all those colors right out. It gives a lot of richness and depth to your painting. So what we're going to do is, this is Mirkwood. You know Mirkwood from the stories, old Mr. Bilbo stories. He went through there with the dwarves and there was a, a black river in there. Well, that river, it's been quite a long time. So that river is now pretty well dried up, but you can still see some of it. As I said, this is a painting to offer us hope. There we go. Clean off our brush. That's right, just beat the Sauron out of it. There, the last few paintings I've done have been, I've been in my hobbit hole, so I haven't been able to really beat that brush because it just kind of throws all that liquid or the uh, odorless paint thinner everywhere. And you don't want that inside your hobbit hole. But when we're out here in the field, we just beat the siren out of it. That part is fun. You'll see. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this a misty area back here. This is where our light is finally coming into Mirkwood. That's right. We'll go up here and take our titanium white let's just pick up some of our blue here mix this together might be a little bright so 
Let's pick up some of that burnt umber just a little bit and we'll work that into there. That just kind of dulls it down. We don't want it too bright. This is just a, a bit of a misty color. Make sure you mix it under your brush real good. Otherwise you get streaks. I do that quite a bit. I don't mix it in real well. I get in a bit of a rush. Don't be hasty. That's what old, old tree beard would say. Don't be hasty. So we're going to come in here and we're just going to lay down some of that light as it comes in. As it comes in through our forest here. Just bring it down. Start at the top. Maybe just maybe put a little bit of our yellow in there. Oh, that might be a little too much. Let's get some more titanium white. There we go. There we go. There we go. This part is just where the light is coming in. And remember, you have trees on this side and trees on this side. So leave these dark areas. Those dark areas can be where the trees will come in. So just lay that down. There we go. Now try and remember how the trees will look when they're hanging down into this area. Okay, now let's just give our brush a clean. There we go. <laughs> it's always fun to clean the brush. Now, now that we have a clean brush, we're just gonna go in and we're just going to soften this up. Just these little crisscross strokes. Oop, I might have a little too much paint thinner still on there. It's picking that paint right off. There we go. Just soften this up. Just use little crisscross strokes. Bring it out into your tree area. Those trees are gonna, they're gonna cover that. So that'll look fine. We want all this action to be back here. All right, that's looking good already. If I don't say so myself. Oh, hello, Mr. Crow. Don't tell on me. I don't like the crows. They sometimes tell on you. There we go, just beat the Sauron out of it. That's right, old, dirty old Sauron. You are defeated. Okay, now, what we want to do is we want to give some indication of some things going on back there. So, let's go into our white. Just come up, we'll use this area where we put our undercolor on there, and let's, Grab some blue, there we are, just mix that in. Maybe grab, maybe, maybe grab some of that burnt umber. Just dull that right out. Now, we're going to bring it up here and you're just thinking, you're just thinking of these trees back here in the distance. Hmm.
sometimes if your paint is a little too thin in the back and you need it to stick better, just take one of these towels made from paper and you can just rub that in. So if you do that, just come back. Just come back then. A little bit of that white, titanium white mixed in. Just mix it in, give it all kinds of action happening back there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now. Just get that brush a little clean and mix it together again. All right, I'm going to move some of this paint because this paint is just very thin and it's not helping our cause. Okay, let's go back and mix a color. There we go. We've got our titanium white. Let's get some of our blue in there. Some ivory black. There we go. Just a touch, just a touch of that red. All right. Now, come in here, see where your trees would go, and just make some things happen back here. Just in the back. Just these are things that happen right there in the back. All the way back there. Now let's give those a little just a little highlight here. Pick up our fan brush and just the top. Just let those things happen. Just where the light is now catching those branches. There we go. Okay, now, as I said, there used to be a black river that would go through there. So, we need a riverbank. Just pull that brown and white together. Just let it come in, pick each other up. Maybe, maybe add a little more brown there. And we'll come in. And we're going to add our riverbank. Comes in from somewhere back in this area. There we go. I just drop that in. Drop it in from this side too. There we go. Now, it gets wider as it comes down. 
Just let it fall off your knife. There we are. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe there's still a little bit of water there. We'll just, just pull straight down. Just grab that part of the riverbank, pull it straight down. There we go. Now, soften that brush and just bring it, soften it up. There you go. There you go. That gives you some nice reflections there. Anytime you're doing these reflections, just pull them straight down, then soften them across. There we go. Come in with some more. Just let the canvas pick up what it's going to pick up. There we are. It's just like doing a mountain, doing it right on the ground. But that makes sense because mountains are on the ground. There we go. Let's just bring it right here. Bring that riverbank down. There we go. Now, we're just going to lightly put a little bit of, little bit of that white that's been dulled down and we'll come back up and let's just pull straight down for that reflection again. There we go. Pull it straight, straight down. And you can see it's starting to pick up some of those highlights that we already did. Then take a brush. And just bring it straight across. Straight across. As you do it, it'll pick up that color and give you instant reflections. Even mixes with those colors underneath. There we go. Now maybe there's, it's drying up. So there's maybe a big rock there in the middle. Maybe right here. Okay, grab a little more of the white and we'll just give that rock a little bit of highlights there. There we go. Now, 
we're going to take our brush again. Just grab it from the bottom and pull straight down. And then soften it out. Instant reflection. There we go. Now, let's finish out that riverbank. We're just going to, let's just bring it down. Maybe it comes back in, comes back in a little more. There we are. Now, if you remember the old story, when Mr. Bilbo and the dwarves came up here, they had to get across. And they found a little old abandoned boat and they were able to hook it with a rope and get themselves across, except poor old Mr. Bomber. He fell right into that water. And it was not the best water to fall into. Why it put him to sleep. And he had dreams of food, glorious banquets. And they were starving at the time, so. That was a very tough thing. All right. So for the part we just laid in, this is going to come back this way and just a little there, little there. Just pull in those reflections wherever they come. And then just draw your brush across. There we go. Oop. Clean that off. Picked up a little too much there, but that's okay. You might be seeing some rocks and things that are under the water. Okay. Now we need to give our riverbank some definition there. So we're going to come into our white. Just pull that out. Cut a row across. And now remember this is always going to be straight. Always straight. Right at your reflection line. There we go. Just cut it straight across. Oh, we've got some fish jumping back there. There we go. Just cut that in. You're not going to hurt your canvas. There we go. There we go. And what that does is that gives your eye a place to see where the reflection comes down. There we go. And 
and come back up here. As you get towards the back and it gets to be a smaller line, just take the small edge of your pallet knife and just cut that in. Cut that in. There we go. There we are. And maybe just take while you have a little bit of weight on there, just give some highlights. Just some highlights on those rocks. There we are. We'll make this guy a little more predominant. There we are. Now, give him a little shape here in the reflection and just draw it across. There we go. There we go. Now, a lot of this, we're going to put some, we're going to put some color back here. So now it's time to get to our trees, our big trees. All right, clean off our brush. And we're going to go into our sap green. Maybe just lighten it with a little bit of white. Just get that loaded onto your brush. Now, this is where the trees that are closer to you, they've got more color. There we go. They've got more color there. They just hang out over that path. Just tap those branches in there. Maybe pick up a little yellow. There we go. And we'll just put in back here. We'll just put in some grassy areas coming right down onto our riverbank. There we go. That marches right back, right back into the wood here. There we are. There we go. Now again, don't kill all your dark places. Let them, let them pick up the highlights. Pick up what's back here. So remember, this is a swampy area. So now we need some, need some trees in here. Just give ourselves some tree, just the indication. There we go.
There we are. Come back, maybe darken the screen up a bit. Darken that up a bit for back here. Back where there's not as much light. Not as much light coming in. Just drop that in. There we go. Now let's give some bushes and things here. There we are. There we go. Let's mix those colors together. You can leave it dark towards the back. Like there's all kinds of things. Maybe there's still some spiders in there. You know, adder crops. Yes. So we'll leave those back there. And let's, let's come on this side. Let's give ourselves some of those trees just hanging right out over that path, causing it to be dark. There we go. Oh, the sheep are all out there grazing. Maybe they'll come for a visit. Okay. Let's give, our, give ourselves some grass back here. Just right up to that river bank. Just come out on, right out onto there. There we go. Now, as I said in the story, old, poor old Mr. Bomber, he was one of the, he was one of the heavier dwarves and he fell asleep and they had to carry him through Mirkwood. Can you imagine that? And then we know what other kind of things happen there. That's when Mr. Bilbo met the Wood Elves. And it wasn't quite a pleasant meeting at first. All right, let's give ourselves, let's give ourselves some trees and things back here as well too. So, just the indication there. We don't need to see them all. A lot of them are hidden. All right, mixing up a color here. I've got some my red, some brown, and put in some greens. There we go. A lot of colors right here. Pull it out. Let's give ourselves this tree. He's a big one right here. He just comes all the way up, all the way up. Mm. 
We can't even see how big this tree is. But you know in here, there's some big trees. And just give them a little highlight here. Right along the edge. Oh. That might be a little too bright. Let's dull that down. There we go. See that? There's no mistakes, just happy accidents. I went with a little too much white at first and it was a little too bright for a forest. So you just come over with some darker color and add it into there. There we go. Now, there's gonna be some of these branches behind him as well. Just pushing him right back. So get back, Mr. Tree. This is my spot. It's more here. Just push those tree trunks back into your painting. Just Okay, let's go. Let's go to one of our fun brushes, okay? I'll lighten this up a little, just a little. Now we'll come in here and just bend that fan brush right onto your canvas. Let it make some rounded things here. Like these are where there's some big bushy trees, maybe. Still a part of the forest that you might not want to go into. Oh. There we go. Let that light and dark play off each other. There we are, bend that up, bring that grass right down over those rocks. Every now and then you might wanna just give your brush a wipe off, just so you're not picking up too much of that brown. There we go. Come back a little more, a little more of that yellow highlight there. There we are. We'll come over on this side. Same thing, same thing. Just let those branches just kind of hang down. There we go. Just push that tree into the back. There's another tree that's saying I'm supposed to be here. And try not to be too repetitious. Sometimes I get into a bad habit where I do the same thing over and over and over and it 
kind of makes makes it look like your painting is just built with lines in it. Okay, come down here. Grabbed a little too much of that brown. Pick this up. There we go. And you can see we have a lot of different colors on our fan brush here. So as we flip it over, it's just going to lay down different patterns, different shapes, different colors. It's just a fun way. Once you've been painting for a little while in the morning, you have these brushes that can give you even more than you're looking for. And then maybe just where is that taking you? Where is that river coming from? Where is it going to take you? Just give some, just some story back there. There we go. Maybe, maybe. Maybe there's some light just kind of streaking through. You can just grab a little bit, little bit of white and your yellow. Just mix them together and just let them bring some rays of light shining right into the forest, except not like that. Whoa, whoa, that was quite a big bee. I don't know if you could see that, but he's still buzzing around. All right. There we go. Now you can, you can spend the rest of your day just adding highlights or you can call it good. It's your painting, you do what you want. There is one last little thing I wanna do on this painting though, before we say goodbye. So here we are in this dark forest. And as I said, this painting is for a charity, for Mission 823. It's a painting that gives hope. And this was a very dark place in Middle Earth at one time. There was a lot of evil here. So, but now it's starting to come back. So that means maybe, maybe there'll be an acorn right on this patch of, of rock and dirt and everything out here. And for so long, nothing new has grown in Mirkwood. But now the evil's been vanquished and let's put ourselves just the hint of a little tree. Maybe, maybe a little tree is just growing up right here. So I'm just going to go with my liner brush. Just put some paint on there. And right here, here we have a small acorn has popped up. Just reminding us that maybe bad things have happened, but we can all have a new day. That's right, we can all have a new day. And the folks at Mission 823 they do very important work. They fight against things, some of the worst kinds of slavery that these children could be forced into. It's terrible, terrible evil stuff. But the folks at Mission 823, they make sure these children who've been orphaned, they make sure they have a place to go Make sure they have a safe environment. And there's nothing more important than having somewhere safe that you can be.
There we go. Here's our little tree. Might be hard to see, but in a few years he's going to grow and he'll be the most mighty tree in this forest. So let's come in and let's give him some leaves. So those leaves stretch up towards the sky. This acorn fought and fought to poke through. First, we're going to put a little bit of a, a darker green on here for the leaves. Now, some people paint their trees like this all the time. They don't use these big brushes like we do. And that's fine, too. Painting can be fun. You can spend all day. You can spend a week on one painting. It's a beautiful thing. I just try and show you a quick way to do it because not everybody has lots and lots of time. We'll just go in here and throw some leaves on this tree. As he's growing, he stretches up. Stretches up as high as he can reach right now. Now, let's come back. Let's get a little bit, a little bit lighter green there. Highlight some of these leaves where it's finding that sunlight that's finally peeking through. And you don't have to think about this too hard. Just find the edges, those edges that would catch the sunlight as it came in. Just come on in. Just make little dabs in there. Just leaving some leaves. There we are. This, this is our hope, our hope right here. Even when somebody's been through the hardest of times, there's always hope. There's always a new day. If you're having trouble finding hope right now, sometimes hope can come in the form of helping others. So if you're struggling, if you get out there and find somebody that can help, that can really help you. That's how we do it. We work together. Now I've just come in with a little bit of white just to pick up. I'm not used to painting with such a small brush, but that's okay. I think I want to make them just a little bit more full. There we go. Oh, hello, sheep. Oh, don't bump that. Hello. Hello. Oh, careful. You're going to knock over my camera. Go behind. What do you say, sheep? Here we go. Well, there he goes. Bye bye. No, don't eat that. That's my stuff. Hey. That's my stuff. No. Sheep's trying to eat my paint. Silly sheep. Let this guy reach up. That is our hope right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now remember, if you're painting at home, 
you're painting at home, you take as long as you want to put in these details. I do it very quick. I'm not as good as Bob Ross the Blue. He taught me how to do it, and he was so fast. I try as hard as I can. We'll just sign this here. There we go. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this painting today. Mirkwood is one of my favorite parts of Mr. Bilbo's story. That's right. Now, as I said, this painting will be auctioned off at Mission 823 for their art auction. Help raise money to support the children of Ukraine. Keep them safe. Protect them. That's right. Oh, there goes the sun. And remember, I'll have a link to Mission 823's website down in my description. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you for joining me on today's painting. I'm so happy you were with me. Now, if you'd like to continue to go on painting adventures with me, become part of my fellowship. And you do that by clicking that subscribe button below. Yes, and be sure to give it a like and a share. That would be also helpful. Now, we don't know how many of these seeing stones are unaccounted for. So we don't know who else is watching. I've got to go. Have a good day.